King of Kings. So if the phones are working, I think we have Gregory in Eugene, Oregon. Yes. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hey, I can hear you a little bit. Since Matt was kind enough yesterday week to listen to me explain some of my thoughts and ideas and a little bit of my belief, I thought I'd return the favor, and I'd like to ask you guys about what you believe. About what? Yeah, it depends about what. Okay, uh, my first question is, uh, as atheists, I, I know most atheists don't believe in an afterlife, but I'm wondering if you believe that the existence of an afterlife is dependent on the existence of a God. No, I, I wouldn't be, now, and, that, and that's, the only reason I say that is because um, Buddhists believe in, like, reincarnation, for example, but they don't believe in a god. So I know that it's possible for a person to accept belief in, you know, an afterlife and not accept belief in a god. Yeah, on that, on that front, I'm with Tracy. I don't believe in a god. I don't believe in an afterlife. But um, I don't believe that the concept of an afterlife is necessarily dependent on a god, although in most religions it would be. Okay, and I understand you guys believe in evolution. So my next question is, do you believe that evolution is done with humanity? Well, I just, first let me just clarify that um, I hope when you say you guys, you mean me and Matt specifically, because atheism is not tied to evolution. Well, well when I say you guys, I, I mean atheists in general. I get the impression that the two of you believe in evolution, although I could be wrong. Well, I would say that Matt and I do accept evolution. Because it's a um, fact. But at the same time, I have to say that it's not, it, there's nothing about atheism that requires a person to accept evolution. Yeah, if you were talking about, it's, it's, it's even wrong, I think, to say atheism in general, um, a, as just a phrase, because there, it isn't an ism. Um, the only reason the label exists is it's a response to an ism. It is a position on a claim, and outside of not accepting the claim a god exists or some god exists, um, there is no other uh, unifying atheist I mean, it's it's a single point. Everything right. else is something else. Uh, now, I will say that by I will say that by and large, the the people that you're going to run into who identify themselves as atheists um, in organizations like this are speaking out. By and large, you're talking about um, skeptical, rational thinkers who are atheists for those reasons. And so, yeah, you're going to run into pretty much people who who don't have a view on an afterlife or, or do, do not accept claims about an afterlife and accept um, scientific evidence and the theories that explain that evidence, like evolution. Now, I don't, okay. under, I don't understand so your question. Ask, uh, I, do you two specifically, Matt and Tracy, do you guys believe in biological evolution? I do, yes. Sure. And as far as your question about whether or not it applies to human beings, I think that's what you're asking. And I would say yes, um, things like residual organs and nipples on males, yeah, I, I think I, I can't deny that there appears to be changes happening. Okay, another question, another question I'm curious about, uh, do you guys believe in the concept of moral objectivity or is morality a continuing human invention that we make up and continue to refine? I personally think it depends on what the person means when they say objective. I've heard definitions of objective in the conversations about morality that I would, that I would be willing to accept, but it wouldn't necessarily be objective uh, to the degree that I tend to think of objective. So it, that, that has to be defined up front what the person means by objective. Um, and usually the, the ones that I'll accept have to do with the idea that would there be a morality that would be most specific to human society and best suited to human societies. And I, there's different, I think, things to account for, such as like the size of a society or the demographics of a society. You have to, there are so many factors that could occur within any social setting that for me it would be very difficult to think that it would be possible to come up with like a universally accepted objective morality, although I know there are people that sort of work toward that goal and they do think that it's more a more realistic goal than perhaps I would, I would imagine. Den Dennis and I had a conversation about this because uh, 
this idea of moral relativism or subjective morality um, is one that comes up over and over again. And uh, to, to answer your question as it was asked, I think the second one is a more accurate representation of my view on it. Um, and what I would say is I'm in agreement with Tracy, um, or, or in agreement with something Tracy referenced, uh, that, and I've, I've mentioned this before, for any given situation, there are a number of possible actions. Some of them are going to be better or worse depending on what you value. But by and large, um, we, we can at least agree on the simple ones, um, the, the, that this, is, this action is better than this one. Now, if that's the case, then in this spectrum and the fact that there would, would likely be a limited number of potential actions, there must be some action or set of actions that represent the best possible actions given uh, the values, the precepts that you're beginning with. And that is what I would identify as uh, the objective moral best. But that's objective only in the sense that it comes after we've set up the, the particular values, values which uh, I think uh, are personal and subjective. I am the author of my morality. It happens that because we're uh, humans with great similarities and similar goals, um, that we're going to have a lot of things in, ag in agreement, right. a lot of values in well, agreement. Plus, society is going to tolerate only to a certain extent. So, for example, a person's selfish motivations will be tolerated to an extent, and they might be able to enforce that with actual force to a certain extent, but there is a time where society simply steps up and says, this is not going to be tolerated. And so in, to that degree, you've almost got a, a check and a balance in that I've got, my own so, I've got my own desires, but then I also have to consider the social context, because right. if I don't, society will check that for me. Yeah. Although I w I'd point out that society would still, could still be wrong and would be right. wrong in, in some cases oh, yeah. where you know, I'm going to disagree with him, but unfortunately we live in a cooperative society and sometimes compromises have to be made. Does that come anywhere near answering your question? Uh, it not only comes near, it goes past the finish line and runs the bonus lap. Cool. So, I'll, uh, I'll stop talking question. now. Uh, this is for the, uh, the Atheist Community of Austin. Do you guys have any special events planned to celebrate the big non-event of December 21st of 2012? Uh, no, other than I, I've promised myself that I won't stop doing this show until after that date. Um, unless, unless I'm, you know, kicked off or we, we lose the show or, uh, you know, something other. Assuming everything continues as normal, I'm, I'm going to do the, this show at least that long so that I can sit here and laugh my ass off the weekend after uh, December 20, whatever it is, 22nd, 23rd, 2012, I don't know. Right, one, two, two, one, I don't, I don't know. know, one, two. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am disappointed that, that all this uh, nonsense uh, over 2012 is probably going to ruin John Cusack's career, but uh, well, I, I, I don't choice. think it'll ruin it. It'll just stand as a bad mark for bad acting roles, and Nick Cage keeps getting work despite bad acting roles like knowing. Well, Nick Cage is, in the, is right now selling off his castles, so uh, I think his bad roles might be paying off. But anyway. Uh, okay, then that's something to consider. But yeah, I'm looking forward to 2013, 2014, just chuckling and saying, hey, the world's still here. And it's still going to be here 2037 when <laughs> it doesn't end in not. 2036. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for calling. Yeah, uh, thanks for your time. And just on a technical note, mm -hmm. uh, I've been experiencing this weird echo chamber effect, uh, listening to sort of double overlap when you guys are talking. Uh, but hopefully your audio techs can get that figured out. We're lucky we have sound at all. <laughs> but thanks. All right. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, <coughs> who tuned in late or who watched some abridged version of the show on the internet, which I think is likely, we had all kinds of problems today with audio. It was, it's, uh, it's been amusing and kind of fun as people crawl around on the floor and hand us mics and we swap mics. Um, that's, give us a couple more weeks and we'll have everything, uh, I don't know. Ironed out. Smoother? Maybe not smooth, but smoothier.